The term data refers to the symbols that represent people, events, things, and ideas. Digital electronics such as mobile phones, iPods, and computers process, store, and transmit characters, numbers, images, and sounds in formats that can be handled by electronic circuitry. Those formats are what we mean by data representations. In reality, digital signals are represented by two different voltages. The positive 5 volts, which is denoted as 1 or the on state, and 0 volts denoted as 0 or the off state. There are no in-between states in digital devices. You could use sequences of ons and offs to represent any kind of data. The zeros and ones used to represent digital data are referred to as binary digits. It is from this term that we get the word bit. A group of 8 bits is called a byte and is usually abbreviated as an uppercase B. Transmission speeds are typically expressed in bits, whereas storage space is typically expressed in bytes. For example, an internet connection might transfer data at 8 megabits per second. In a flash drive specification, you can see storage capacity such as 32 gigabytes for documents, music, video, and other files. In this video, we are going to learn how computers represent numbers, letters, images, and sound. Let's start with numeric data. Numeric data consists of numbers that might be used in arithmetic operations. For example, your monthly income, your age, and the price of your car are all numeric data. Digital devices can represent numeric data using the binary number system, also called base 2. The binary number system has only two digits, 0 and 1. After you reach 1, you run out of digits. To get to the next number, you have to use 0 as a placeholder and the 1 to indicate one group of 2s. So the number 2 is represented in binary as 1, 0. The binary number system allows digital devices to represent virtually any number simply by using zeros and 1s. Digital devices can then perform calculations using these numbers. Next is how do computers represent character data. Character data is composed of letters, symbols, and numerals that are not used in arithmetic operations. Examples of character data include your name, address, and contact details. When any key on a keyboard is pressed, it needs to be converted into a binary number so that it can be processed by the computer and can appear on the screen. A code where each number represents a character can be used to convert text into binary. One code we can use for this is called ASCII. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It requires only 7 bits for each character. It can store 128 characters including uppercase letters, lowercase letters, punctuation symbols, and numerals. A superset of ASCII, called Extended ASCII, uses 8 bits to represent each character. Using 8 bits instead of 7 bits allowed extended ASCII to provide codes for 256 characters. For example, this is how a computer can use zeros and ones to represent the letters in the name Vic. If you want to use accents in European languages, or larger alphabets such as the Russian alphabet, Cyrillic, and Chinese Mandarin, then more characters are needed. Unicode was created for this. Unicode uses 16 bits and provides codes for 65,000 characters. For example, Unicode represents an uppercase A in the Russian Cyrillic alphabet with a set of zeros and ones. At this point, let's see how bits can be used to store images. To work with images such as photos, pictures, line arts, and graphs, they must be converted into binary in order for a computer to process them so that they can be seen on our screen. 
Images can be digitized by treating them as a series of pixels or colored dots. Each dot is assigned a binary number according to its color. For example, a green dot is represented by 0010 and a red dot by 1100. The number of bits used to sort each pixel is called the color depth. Images with more colors need more pixels to store each available color. This means that images that use lots of colors are stored in larger files. Lastly, let's take a look at how can bits be used to store sound. Sound, such as music and speech, is characterized by the properties of a sound wave. You can represent sound waves digitally by the process called sampling. For example, this one second sound wave was sliced into 13 samples. The height of the fourth sample is about 50, which can be converted into a binary number and stored. Here are other samples with converted binary numbers. This means the more samples you take, the sound will have a quality closer to the original. We come to the end of this video lesson. I hope I have given some light to your knowledge about data representation in computers. If you find this helpful, please like, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your time.